Let's go over incision design and some of the instrumentation uh, right before we're about to place the implant. So, some of the things right that we're always going to use. My favorite instrument is this elevator. It's called a Boozer elevator. And even if we compare it to the size of a peri of a different type of periosteal, right? Like this one. Like look how small this one is compared to this one. When you're starting to use a smaller periosteal, specifically this Boozer elevator that I recommend, uh, your surgery is going to get that much more detailed because you can go in, um, and if you go in with this instrument here, this thing is pretty fat. At that point, you're kind of mashing the tissue, making almost pulled pork out of it, uh, as opposed to using something smaller uh, and sharper to start reflecting your incision. So definitely use a little bit sharper and better instrumentation when you're using it. Other things that we're definitely always using, um, right, is your uh, your tissue pickup, your Addison, and your Minnesota retractor. So common mistakes we see are picking up mirrors and trying to retract with mirrors. Definitely don't want to be retracting with mirrors. Uh, Minnesota retractors, the tissue force up here in your Boozer elevator. This is what I use to make every single flap that I do. As far as your um, blade goes, I always use a 15C. This is a, it's a little bit smaller one. You can use a 15, 15C, it doesn't matter. This one specifically is a 15. Uh, other choices are a 12. You can use a 12 blade as well. Sometimes I'll use a 12 blade in some really, really hard areas to reach. So let's talk about incision design specifically. <clears throat> now, when we're looking here, let's say, for example, that we're going to be working here on tooth number 13. You can almost call it 14 with how wide it is. But looking down on it, there's a couple spots you could put it. So let's say, <clears throat> let's say you do mid-crestal incision here, right down the middle of it. Um, if you do that, and say, see, this is lingual here, and just so depth so you can see a little bit better, that's buckle, so right in the middle of the two. If you make an incision here and you reflect the flap this way and this way, and you're placing an implant, um, by the time you place the implant, the implant should be in the middle of the ridge. But if you place the implant at the middle of the ridge and your incision is also on the middle of the ridge, when you go to suture or go to suture this closed, your incision line will be right over the top of the middle of the implant. And in the beginning, when we're placing implants, especially the first couple hundred, uh, in your suturing is going to be that much more important. Uh, I've fell for this even grow, you know, going out my first couple years out in terms of placing implants. I would put my incision in the middle, I place my implant, I close it, and then my incision was open up a mill like a one millimeter. But if your incision opens up one millimeter, now the opening is directly over the top of the implant. And now bacteria will get over the top of the implant and you're going to get bone loss, at least one to two millimeters of bone loss in the beginning of stages of your implant placement, which is just not okay. At that point, you're gonna to have to take the implant out, graft it, and you're gonna to have to retry again. Uh, so you may see all those posts on Facebook, there's a ton of them, people say, hey, I just placed this implant one to two weeks ago, there's bone loss, what happened? Uh, what happened was their incision line was not lingualized and their suturing was not watertight. So that's when we also want to think about some of our suturing techniques that we're gonna go over and also using things like PRF. PRF will add an extra layer of protection over the top of the implant. Um, we don't typically place membranes because you know placing a membrane here, uh, it's very expensive. <laughs> so we definitely don't wanna be placing you know, 80 to 100, $120 membranes over the top of implants when the easy solution could be just fixing where you're putting your incision, which would be back here more, or at that point just adding PRF, which costs you know, anywhere from seven to $12 per use. So we're gonna use my dental eraser there, which is my finger. <laughs> and now what we're gonna do is I'll show you like where we actually want the incision to be. We want it to be lingualized right here. And my old one was right here for mid crustal. So when you put your implant right in the center of the ridge, which it pretty much always ends up now, the incision right here, after you suture this close, and this is where your implant is, 
Now your implant is in the center of the ridge, but your incision is on the back side. So when you close this flap, the open, if it opens a touch, it's gonna to be on the back side of the implant. It's not gonna be directly over the top of it. So that drastically decreases uh, the risk of having uh, peri-implantitis or an infection that's going to uh, end up with you losing one to two millimeters of bone right from the start. So what I'll do with my incisions are, you know, you're gonna go lingualized right here. I dig in to you hit bone very firmly and then you're gonna move back towards the other tooth here. After I do that, see how I turn my, my 15 upwards here? And I kinda of go right against the bone. And then I'm gonna retrace this one again, because right now what you're doing is you're going through the periosteum and you're hitting the bone. So you're scraping all the periosteum away from the bone. Because if you just kinda of go once through it at that point, when you try to reflect it, you won't have all of the periosteum that will be attached to the tissue. You'll have some peri periosteum attached to the bone. And when you make, you know, basically a partial thickness flap at that point, the patient's gonna have a lot more post-operative pain because you left periosteum intact on the bone. So you want it to be off in one clean spot. So after you make the incision, that's when I'll go back with this boozer elevator and See how much smaller this impl this this elevator is? Let's see if, if I go back and forth, this is so sharp, you can like, like hear it carving it. Now if you go with this one, you're basically just putting this huge, it feels like, man, this thing feels like my thumb trying to get in there. <laughs> like it is a, a gigantic instrument. You can see the tissue flex and move around um, even, and it will flex around these, these areas here and here. And this is where a lot of people will get a tissue tear, a tissue tear because of how big this instrument is. So that's why I like to use this one. So what I'll do is go back and forth, really good. And then you can start wiggling this instrument underneath it, right here and here, like that. And I lift the corners up. You can see these little corners that'll start to pop up a little bit here and here. Um, and then you can also do it on the lingual side here, just really back and forth, back and forth, and you can kind of lift it up. At that point, once you even get it started to moving, one thing that I like to do a lot of time is I'll just pick up the top of the tissue there, right here, so you actually have a good support on it. And then you start to kind of move the edges up here, and you're moving the edges up here. And then as you're going and opening the flap, you're, you're kind of scraping off this periosteum that's around it. And then you're ended up with a nice clean flap at that point. Same thing on the lingual side. With the lingual side, what I like to do is I like to tuck this instrument and kind of scrape back and forth, back and forth, and you can start to see how my instrument is becoming buried on the lingual. Then all you do is actually you just lift your instrument straight up in the air like this, and boom, it comes undone like that. And you kind of go over here, same thing. So it's not really a lot of motions. So you just tuck this guy underneath it, lift up in the air, and your lingual flap will, so will be retracted at that point. And then when you're actually going to start your drilling sequence, that's when your Minnesota is actually going to be on the bone, right? And it's not going to be uh, right in the cheek tissue here. 